we go then, looking very different to how it did when we left off the Hoover Junior 1334A is almost all here in front of us. I see one bit on the sofa that I forgot. There's another piece that seems to have gone walkies as well. So if I don't find that before we get to that stage, then I guess we'll have to show what's missing. Comment if you know before that point of the video. But yeah, we're going to lob it all back together. We're going to lob it all back together in my way. Because everybody has their own way of doing things. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how Becco 1987 lobs a junior back together. Let's go. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? I wish I had a magic wand and we could wave it and this would all just go ping back together. But no, this is what I forgot to put out. Look, what's this part? Anybody know? This is the motor to body gasket. Well done if anybody got it. Yeah, it's all here and it's all grouped up-ish. I didn't quite know how to lay it out. So we have the handle bail. Bosch roll, front and rear wheels, motor, body stuff, bag, handle, flex, bumper plug, etc. And that's pretty much how I put this together. It all goes in stages. But the first thing that we need to do is the bit that requires some silicon sealant. This is the hood. After a little bit of retro brighting, it's not perfect. But equally, it's very even, and it's a lot flipping lighter than it was. You now can't really see the difference. But obviously our hood hasn't got a firewall in it. No, because this is here, along with the air ducts. And first we've got to get the silicon out. Now the very first thing we're going to do is put the hood back away and concentrate on these parts. We need to stick that to that. And even from the factory, there was... A small gasket. I use this. It's just general purpose silicone, but it's clear, and that is the key part of it because you don't want much. Oh, let's just get the blobby bit out of the end of the nozzle. Use this earlier. It shouldn't have gone that hard that quickly. You're not using much. You just want enough just to form a little gasket. Oh. And obviously we use clear just because it looks nicer than white. It can ooze out a little bit and you're not going to notice. So with a little smear just around there, and just stick this on like so. Then we need to go to our screw card and find our air duct screws. And these go in top and bottom. Get it nicely lined up. Come on. <laughs> the other one sits back here, like so. Give a good old turn down. until they're nicely into place and again you can hold it it's not it's all held in with the screws now we need our hood and what we've got to do is put a nice big bead of silicone over the top of where the old was because it will find that space nicely Then we can take our firewall and air duct assembly and drop it 
into place and it will sit fairly well. That is what you want. We now get our three firewall screws and pop those in very nicely. Indeed, he says, dropping the first one. Come on. Ah, there you go. It wasn't pushed down properly. These really pull it through. And what you want to see, you probably won't now, at your angle, is all the silicone seep out of the joint. Hence, you use the clear. Then when that's done, I get out the silicone sealant again and just do a little bead just up this back corner like so this one's not too bad depending on how much of the old silicon stayed and then with a damp finger just run your finger up nicely just to help seal the edges and that basically makes this almost a hundred percent suction tight again something which these things you know stop being quite suddenly so that is now in there it's nice and tight but it can go over there and relax. Oh, whilst we fill up our motor housing, well, actually before we fill up our motor housing, we need to build our armature. We start with the front bearing, which has been soaking in also smart TARDIS, actually, but anything like that will do. You pop that on and you get, well, I get, and it's probably gonna cause controversy here, Tips down below, I just fill it full of oil. You want to get it to soak right into the little felt pad. And it'll drink it up. Should probably do a video on how this improves normal, you know, without soaking them in petrol. We might try that. So there we go, that is now spinning much more nicely. And it'll, it'll change your use as well. Then we take the fan spacer, push it in our two washers our two fiber washers oddly they did away with the two fiber washers at some point and then our fan and then our belt spindle which once the threads are located with fiber, be very careful with the belt spindle because that little plastic bit the threads go very brittle very brittle indeed and then once it's down enough you can hold it and the fan and eventually just the fan and the whole thing will go really tight you want that ever so tight now we can sort of start to rebuild this we have our armature now we're going to be building this sans suppressor so i've chopped the cable off already and you want to make sure the holes there obviously go with the holes there we also need our back bearing for this part little splodge of grease not an awful lot at all literally just enough just in the bottom there so that it fills up any imperfections and whatnot that you may see in there and then it's a bit of a two-handed operation but you put the armature through the coil the flat side of this bearing goes on the flat edge on here and the whole thing will drop into place like so now of course it's going to move because we don't have our bearing bolted down so we shall get our bracket and our two front bearing screws and a screwdriver and tighten these down nicely With the front bearing clamped down, I then use just two little lock washers, anything will do. You could even use the bracket from the old suppressor, because what we need to do is to get our coil screws and screw the coil down, but these just take up and give it that extra bit of width that it had, because I'm just always a little bit paranoid about it, you know, punching through the side of the housing of the coil and knackering up the armature. 
it just seems right to so give it a little bit of spacing. With those screws done up, we can turn the thing around now and find our rear bearing, our rear bearing screw and rear bearing bolt because it has both. The first one of which goes in from the other side. Oh, and you find Jeff. Oh, it's a Phillips, isn't it? Can be either a crosshead or a slot head. It really depends on what era we're talking. Then we'll take the nut off there. This one goes in from the back. With the nut down there. And we can do it up as well and then with all three of those being there this is now your checkpoint one because your motor ooh, look at that though, should spin freely and that is not spinning very freely so at this point we can take our belt spin so i'm not going to take the entire thing apart because we can now rip it and twist it what we need is another spacer washer which I really haven't got on me so I'm going to have to pause and go and get it but yes it, it, it's just rubbing against that it literally just needs one more there we go what it actually was was one of those cooling fans was just bent enough to catch on there I, I did put an extra washer on it so it should be fine as well and what you eventually want, once you've taken out, you see I've taken out a couple more washers. Because you want the little space behind the fan, in between the fan and the case, and to be as thin as possible, whilst at the same time, the thin, free spins, an absolute treat. There's no real play in it at all. And it all needs to be square. That is the first time you can really test it. Now we can start to put our carbon brush holders in. And it's always easier to put the holder in and then try and put the cable on the holder, trust me. So we'll put our first holder in and its bracket on the later motors. This is a much worse design of carbon brush holders. We ha I haven't done the U1104 that I have yet. It's going to have it pick this little yellow wire up put it on the bracket and then this is where it gets fun sort of push it all down hold it into place and do the little brass screw up like so then prepare for battle with this little cable in a minute and the top case we'll put our other carbon brush in now Although we put the actual carbon itself in afterwards when it's a bit more together. We can now roughly fit what's left of our oh, wrong way around, rubber seal. Which, yeah, it's just going to be what it is, I think. It shouldn't matter too much. As long as it's there, when it's all clamped down, it won't really matter. But I was hoping I could follow. <laughs> follow the existing run and when you're confident enough it's all going to hold itself together you can don't forget this part poke your red cable through there start to sit the motor housing down fit the terminal block and squeeze everything together. This bit down here is going to be this carbon brush holder. And there's not really a lot you could do. Sort of fiddling it about, slacking off the screw and pull the connector down a little bit. Normally sometimes does it. It all just fits very precisely in that little gap.
and eventually it will go together perfectly well enough and then we can get our three bolts one is longer and that goes on the back no little star washing you are not going to require being threaded on the whole way oh well, we don't want to take all day on this. It's only a 10 minute job. And yeah, start to do up all your screws, oh, nuts and bolts, to do the motor casing. Okay, with our casing tight and nicely down and everything spinning very freely, we can move on to our switch. Where we can strip down our wires. Now I always just connect the live straight to the coil. Many people disagree with that. Many people agree. I have done a video already with an electrolyte twin turbo explaining why I don't think it is necessary. What is necessary though? A little bit of heat shrink to cover this join, what we are about to make. And I always like to solder my joints. I just find it a lot neater than using crimps, especially on a machine like this. So a nice twist together with the wires. Have my soldering iron here, I'm just warming up. Solder is by my feet. There's the end of the solder. Come on, eh. And when we have our solder joint looking sufficiently safe and secure, we'll pop the heat shrink back on, set it on fire a bit. And move on to the next stage, which involves bringing back our chassis. And we need to put the gasket back onto the motor. And then we sit our motor inside like so and then we need our four screws, a screwdriver and in my instance a little drop of blue tack because my screwdrivers aren't very magnetic anymore. Oh, ah. So I'm sort of hoping that by bodging a little bit of blue tack onto the head of the screw, blue tack seems to be sticking to my fingers more than the screw. So hold it enough. For me to get the first one in. Ooh, ah, there it goes, it's caught the thread now. I'll have your blue tack back there because that'll look terrible. Oh, there it is. And then second, third, fourth, so on. We can then take our two switch screws and screw those into place as well. Now the switch obviously has to go on with its button on first and then screws into place only goes on one way so if it feels wrong it is and swap it round and put it on the other way.
then feed the terminal wire through and pop it, well, anywhere you want really, on the junction box, ready to receive the live wire from the mains cable in the future. Da, da, da. Right, we now need to make a little loop cable for our neutral, which goes to that top carbon brush. And with a small piece of incorrect coloured wire made up, again you can make this up however you wish, you could use a crimp and do it properly, I just prefer to use the washer, oh hello, the carbon brush isn't pushing in, oh there we go, quite as smooth as it could have done but then it opened right up afterwards. Yes, I prefer the washer of the terminal works absolutely fine. Again, you can do this however you want. <laughs> but eventually the screw will line up into the thread and go on just fine. Crikey, this thing is fighting me, folks. Saved its life and it's fighting me. That does look a bit odd without black, I'll be honest. I would recommend you use a neutral cable. Then it doesn't really matter because the electricity just flows in a big circle. Right. That's about it for that. For now, anyway. We need to start building up stuff now. So we'll start with our front wheels and again just a little drop of grease then we have the washer and then the little c-clip which should you watch it not pop on nicely like that same with the other side. Wheel, washer, nah, ooh. Not the same as the other side. In fact, we need to, I always forget this part. <sighs> Gotta put this on, look. I've been used to too many older, no, sorry, newer <laughs> hoovers that don't have this arrangement. Oh, crikey, now we've got to work out how it sits. Like that. That's it. Back sir clip. <laughs> Wheel. Washer. Front sir clip. Then we can come back to our hoover and attempt to fit it. Now, we've got to try and get the bracket on first. So I can see why they got rid of this design. It's not the best. And I think that's right. It's then um, these two little screws here. The screws haven't changed. They're still the same front wheel screws. Oh, I know why, because they're not tensioned, and I think I've got to tension the springs after the brackets on that. So ah, I thought I was going to drop them <laughs> right down to the abyss. And hopefully, no, they're not needle nose pliers. One, two. And that is what you want. So setting one, push down, setting two. Beautiful. All right, now we sort of, we can go one of a few ways here. And for now, I'm going to go to the front and work on 
our beautiful painted brush roll which is looking very nice indeed and then yeah we need basically an entire end's worth do the short end first the short end has the keyed portion and it's quite simple really you put your bearing on the end and twist it on push your brush strips into the brush roll. Now I went through the shed for something else today. I managed to turn out a set of genuine Hoover brush strips that are actually a lot longer than the ones that came out of it. So that was, oh, that's why. Look, that was not a Hoover Junior brush roll strip. Ooh, bother. Bother, bother, bother. Some quick surgery later though. Has them fitting like an absolute dream. Right. End cap in, making sure, where is it, to line up the notch on the end cap with the brush roll. You might need to give it a little bit of a tap. Anti-vibration washer in. Then drop this on. Push it through and stand up onto your end. And then do the other end cap, happily tap, anti-vibration washer, brand new bearing, and other end cap, do them both up and you should have something which free spins like that. Then coming back to our hood, we can fit our belt guard when you put the spring in first. And then, oh, I've got to try and do this backwards, haven't I? Hook the end under. And then it should just, ah, ah, push up <laughs> into there. Like, oh, like so. Have a nice belt, I think. Might be the same nice belt that came out of it before. I can't remember now. I've done about four Hoover Juniors filming the before video of this. Oh, look at that look. Because, of course, we don't have our springs in. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> and you can fit these before or afterwards, really. It doesn't fully matter. I say possibly fit them before, though. Because that's not looking very easy. No, I've forgotten something. So I take them out to flush the grit out. And then... Aha! And then, oh, we can get our belt the right way round. And stick it on. Oh, making it dirty. Right! Onwards now to starting to put the cable on. And what you saw me do earlier was not, well, it was make a lovely cup of coffee, but it was also to put this grommet into boiling water. Because that makes it soft enough to push back into here. And the way you push it back into here is you need to push the little boot through. And it gets awfully grubby doing this, so it's going to have to be cleaned off afterwards. And then before you know it, it'll pop in. All of that bit will be out. Come on. Oh, look at that. It's just, you can see what I'm trying to do. There it is, look. And eventually it will go in. Oh, I knocked the lights off. So we'll clean all that up cosmetically later on because now we can put oh, put our cable in. I'm going to have to do this backwards because I do not want to rip off our original. In fact, no, they went in. They came out. They can go in, can't they? I don't want to rip them off. But then again, they pulled out fine. See, the reason I like to do this first is because it's a lot easier 
before we put the handle bed on, but you have to be so careful of these circuit, not circuit, crimped ends to not rip them off. There we go. It really doesn't matter where we put these now. It really doesn't matter at all. Just wire up your main cable and I'll put the clamp on as well and then we'll come back. Now we can move on to our handle bale and we start with the return spring and this part here that carries the actual pedal itself and again little smear of grease on there and then you have to hold this into rough position and put this pin down the O and then pop this circlip on and hope it doesn't fly across the room. Like so. Then we can loosely put our spring into place with the tension off for now. Have this bit underneath there. And then push that bit up there like so. Then we get our middle bolt and again little drop of grease on the two contact points and push it into place which is a bit fiddly because you've got to fight the spring and the little bit of metal you can manipulate it a little bit there we go and eventually we'll push in so it's flush there like so then a little drop of grease there there and all over there for our kick plate i got this the wrong way round it's supposed to go on this side can i do it without messing up too much of what's already done ha ha Yes, I can. There we go. Always make sure that this stuff is on the right side. Ha! Now we can go and put some grease on our extremities. Ready for this part here. Which fiddles on like so. Then we can do up our bolt, our little nut that holds the whole thing together. I'm just going to use pliers here because it really is fine. Problem is, doesn't return. So you have to grip and this, this could either again go spot on. Oi, look at that tuck that down there and there we have it we can now fit this to our machine try and find an angle that I can hang it off the edge on that you can see there we go because it's a lot easier to hang it off the edge when you do this handle bail screws oh so we're over halfway Yay, I hear you cry. I would have got myself a coffee. You should have done that. There we go. Problem is, we're still missing a set of wheels. 
Yeah, it is. So a bit more greasy grease. For our lovely original wheel, washer, and circlip. Oh, and these ones go inside of the wheel face. So you then have to try and pop them on the rest of the way, like so. Now for this piece, check it now because sometimes they just go on, sometimes they don't and it's easier to slide them on the axle. Check before you fully do your wheels up. And then we can come back over here. sit our bracket and the wheels on to the back of the handle bail and do up the screw before the spring flies everything off this is then what provides the springiness for the recline pedal spring fun fact can we can put our bottom cover take one last look I think we can put our bottom cover back onto the machine which is a momentous step indeed there we go look problem is though the fiddliest part is yet to come I know that much there we go second screw one Becco standard of Hoover Junior. In fact, while we're there, we may as well pop the lovely green furniture guard on because it's easier this way. Because we have now fitted our cable. I like to do this sort of stuff after I've washed my hands from doing the inside because on the Hoover Junior, you always get grubby. See, look at that. That's all dirt that's going to have to come off with the rest of it. In fact, while I'm at this angle, look, we can take the belt cover. Now I sprayed this black primarily because it was just a little bit busty. And it could, it just made it look a little bit less rubbish. Quite honestly. No other reason for it. We'll do up our screw. <sighs> and fit that. And that is almost, I mean, you know, it, it, it it still needs waxing. We'll do all that in the after video. This is just putting it together. <laughs> you could, I could have pulled that out of the box after spending a couple of hundred pounds on it on eBay. Fantastic. Right. With the machine done though, that means that we are now down to the fiddly stuff. Ugh. I don't like doing the fiddly stuff. We got to pop our now clean rubber seal into there then oh, put our metal bracket in but I think it's going to be a sod oh no yes that's it you sit there oh so close you literally got to pull it apart and sort of two bits of metal snap back into each other. Come on you sod. With that on as much as it's going to go, we'll put I should never oh look at the paint flaking off it. See this is the problem with doing this. Sooner or later you are going to do a little bit of damage. Right, we're not putting the anti vibrate pad back into here because quite frankly I never do anyway. 
I was thinking about it the other night. What is the point? Instead, we shall force the bellows onto there, put this onto here, trying to not lose any more paint. Oh, goodness. Ah. There we are. Now for the bit that I'm not fully looking forward to. This is the bag, and it, it came out fine. I'm not going to get every little bit of dirt off. Quite a fragile bag. It means that to fit it, I'm going to be using good old reversible cable ties, I'm afraid. I'm not going to try string. I just don't think I'm good enough. I'd rather, you know, with a cable tie at the very least, I know what... Oh, I forgot about this bit. I know I can slip a cable tie off more easily. I'm not going to feel myself inching this back on. By the power of magic, one cable tie later, because my string tying skills are not great. Plus, once it's all together, look, you can't see it anyway. I'm not going to put a bag in it now. We'll save that for the after video. But we can do up our bag and check that it is perpendicular to the seam and call that bit done. Now I think I've actually got to, oh no wait, there is some close up stuff that we can still do because, ah, I'm just getting caught. We've got to put the bag holder back onto this handle. Oh, never fun. <laughs> This bit isn't. The spring goes on and clips in there, like that. Then ugh, you have to push it up the hole, keeping it straight and narrow, then peering through this little gap with a screwdriver fish it back out ah. and then making sure it doesn't go ping make sure that the head of the rivet is facing the front where it's going to look nice oh yeah what well, that's lined up perfectly Bam-o. Ah. obviously it should be yeah, really really springy Oof. And then try not to put a massive scratch. Oh my goodness. A massive scratch down the front of your your handle. Ah! Clip the circlet back on. Oh, I hate doing these. Let's find a smaller. This is the last circuit though. Of the entire machine. Hoover seniors are worse. They have more. Aha! There we go. One lovely handle. Whilst we are at it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This should just twist on. Roughly line up. He says with nothing lining up at all. Oh no, one side has. This side hasn't. So with a small little screwdriver just sort of help it along a bit from behind and soon enough it will work and go in nicely oh right we can come up a little bit now because we can oh start to fit our handle and what i've actually got to do is i forgot to fit this earlier slide these two bits all the way down the cable <sighs> Now we can put this piece into the back of the handle. This is what makes the cable hug the back profile of the machine. And we can put a handle in and stick some handle bolts together. Now that our cable can be wound on, we need to turn our attention 
to this. And whilst this brown MK plug is gorgeous and has been refurbished, I do feel a white MK plug is going to look just a little bit better. So we'll shove it in. And there we go. Then we can get to our bag, which needs a screwdriver that I've just put away. Hook the back on. Oh. There we go. And then do the top screw up. And fit the bag onto the handle and by crikey, we are ready for testing. Will it blow up or not? It didn't blow up, but the belt popped straight off. And that was on correctly as well. Oh, I unplugged it. I can turn it straight on now. Absolutely beautiful. No after video until I have a bag in it. And I have a very special extra for the after video on this, so stay tuned. But this was basically just how to refurbish a Hoover Junior 1334 or any Hoover Junior, really and truthfully. So, there we go. All done. Another one ticked off. This I've done five of these so far, all to exactly that order. So it's a tried and tested method. All of us do it differently though. And you know, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have fun, and the end result is you have a very nice hoover afterwards. That's all that matters. So stay tuned for the after video dropping soon when we have some really cool stuff lined up for this, including some extras. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I, Andy's Hoover Jr., will see you soon. Bye-bye.